Okay. Hola, buenas tardes. Y aquí vamos y buenas tardes, buenas tardes. Ay, la, el termómetro en, en mi patio me dice que la temperatura está en, a ciento... 114, 114 grados. Ah, uh, 114. Ah, Aquí era 17 de grados. Ah, sí. Ah, es un horror. Pero aquí estamos para practicar, para practicar. Hoy vamos a practicar con uh, hablando de uh, una comparación de dos lugares, dos ciudades, dos estados, lo que quieran, whatever you guys want. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start with our, our little comparison of two places first. And after that, we're going to move on to our... Uh, Finishing up the uh, verbs where we have one thing in English and you wind up getting one or two different verbs in Spanish. And why does that happen? Our verbs. Uh, 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 vamos a en enfocarnos en los verbos lanzar, tirar, echar. Muy importante el verbo echar. Y entonces platicar y discutir. Okay, vale. Uh, if we get time to venture in a little something else, great. If we don't, también está bien. It's all good, too. So we'll fit in as much as we can, uh, and we'll do a little preview of what conversation will be for next week. Uh, oh, primero, primero, first. Uh, I do have to let you guys know that Uh, I got notification that sign up for fall. Oh, does that make me tired to even <laughs> think about that? No, no. Ay, a ver. Wow. Uh, sign up for fall. Registration for all the fall classes will start Monday, Monday the 24th. Yeah. Uh, if you're outside of the city limits of Scottsdale, it will be that Tuesday, the 25th. But for most of you, it's the 24th. Uh, Please keep in mind two things. Thing number one, fall is weird. Fall is weird because they actually split it into two sessions. And the first session runs September through like Halloween-ish, okay? End of October. The second fall session, still called fall, <laughs> starts usually first week of November through however late they run it up to close to christmas and the holiday times but you if you want to do both of those fall sessions you have to register twice just a reminder because a lot of times somebody forgets so i do that reminder there are two sessions and it is a separate registration for the september through october a separate registration for the november december you can do it all on that monday okay but Yeah, that's the way that runs. Second thing about registration is uh, you don't want to know why. I had to change the, the label on the class name. It's a long story. But just look for, it'll say Spanish step two. It won't say Spanish yeah. continuing one. <laughs> But it shouldn't be that bad. Just look for Spanish stepped to and look for Wednesday, six o'clock with my name tagged <laughs> and you'll find it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but the title of the class is slightly different. And the description looked a little different. Yes. We are trying to get people to read the descriptions and sign up for the class they feel comfortable with that is the correct level for them. And we always have lots of questions from people who are signing up. So that's why all these changes and oh well. So 
If you're confused, don't feel badly. Just email me later. Okay. Aquí vamos. Here we go. Um, bueno, vimos un, o ustedes vieron un video de, uh, de, una, de una entrevista o muchas entrevistas con la gente en la calle, ¿sí? Y uh, el tema del video fue uh, ¿dónde, ¿Dónde te gustaría vivir más en Barcelona o en Madrid, no? Okay. Uh, coming out of that video of people saying, well, I like this city better and I don't like this city because I asked you to pick two places and think of uh, why you would want to live in one place or you wouldn't want to live in the other. Uh, and your, uh, oh, and I would like you, I would like you, this was a great suggestion and it worked extremely well this morning. I would like you to start with a one sentence English, just the big idea. And then your explanation in Spanish. The reason for the one sentence in English as a just uh, is to give people time to think about, oh, I'm listening for this kind of vocabulary, okay? Because sometimes somebody may need to use a special term that might be a harder vocabulary word for other people to know. And so the one sentence in English uh, is uh, supposed to help with that. And it did help my folks in my morning session. Aquí, el ejemplo, el ejemplo aquí. The gist, the me, ah, la, uh, la idea principal, primero en inglés. Uh, I don't like the humidity and bugs in the South. That's where I don't want to live. But I would live in Colorado because I like mountains. So you know you're listening for vocabulary about little animalitos. You know you're <laughs> listening for things about weather. You know you're listening for things about, ooh, outdoors, uh, mountains, etc. Okay. En español, ¿sí? No me mudaría a los estados en el sureste, sureste uh, de Estados Unidos, uh, como Florida, Alabama, Georgia. Uh, no soporto, no soporto la humedad. No soporto la humedad y los insectos y y no enormes, los insectos enormes que viven allá. Me gustan las playas y el mar, pero prefiero vivir en las montañas. Uh, así que sería mejor vivir en Colorado. Uh, Colorado tiene el clima fresco. Uh, tiene senderos y árboles en las montañas y me encantaría esquiar en el invierno. Colorado tiene muchas actividades al aire libre en las montañas. Boom. ¿Ok? ¿Bien? ¿Bien? Ok, vale. ¿Quién quiere empezar? Who would like to start off? Don't all volunteer at once. Okay, uh, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, I would like to live in Hawaii because of the beaches and the balmy temperatures. I would not like Los Angeles because of all the people, the traffic, and the pollution. Okay. And a smog. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, me gustaría vivir en Hawaii. Me encanta la playa. Y las temperaturas suaves uh, me parecería como unas vacaciones permanentes. No, no me gustaría vivir en Los Ángeles. Hay demasiadas uh, personas y tráfico. También hay mucha contaminación del aire. Muchísima contaminación. Sí, continúa, sí. perdón. Sí. Um, 
Yo sé que hay playas cerca de Los Ángeles y son muy populares. Esas playas son suficiente anchas, wide enough, uh, para mucha gente. Excepto Waikiki, las playas de Hawaii uh, tienden a ser largos y estrechas. Así que la gente en la playa está más dispersa. Ok, vale, sí. Uh, uh, playas anchas, playas con mucho espacio. Uh, sí, todo el mundo dice que la playa en Waikiki uh, tiene una gran cantidad de turistas. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Siempre, siempre. No importa la fecha. Uh, siempre hay de demasiados turistas en Waikiki, pero los otro, uh, las otras playas no son así. Sí, bueno. Verdad. Bueno, y tienen las playas de muchos colores en Hawaii también, ¿no? Hay playas sí. negras con arena negra, oh. hay playas sí. con, con la, la arena blanquísima, así, hay variedad. Sí. Y el Muy... agua tiene muchos colores. Ah, también, sí. Uh, Sí, Jeva, y uh, uh, no he visitado, personalmente no he visitado nunca a uh, Hawaii, pero me gustaría ver uh, los paisajes de Hawaii. Uh, bueno, me gusta mucho. Gracias, Karen. Sí, a uh, little quick reminder, that little word demasiado is a tricky one in one sense. A lot of times, if we use demasiado to talk about an action, por ejemplo, Uh, por ejemplo, bebo, bebo demasiado café. Uh, bebo demasiado. Bebo demasiado. I drink too much. <laughs> bebo demasiado. I drink too much. If we use it, talk about an activity, not about el café. Uh, bebo demasiado would mean I drink too much. Yeah. Uh, uh, hablo demasiado. I talk too much. Ah, uh, uh, piensas demasiado. You think too much about, you know, whatever. You overthink it. Yeah. Uh, then it's just demasiado. Uh, but when we're going to tag demasiado to a thing, then it's got to play nice with the thing it's talking about. So demasiada gente, too many people. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, 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 de, demasiado tráfico. Uh, I see, like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's kind of an MBD, no big deal, but, you know, something to think about. It can be, you know, depending on which word it's talking about, just plain on flat, demasiado, or go into gender forms. Does Buenas it ever idea. need to be plural? A veces sí. Mm. Uh, por ejemplo, um, hay demasiados carros en la autopista 101. Okay. Hay demasiados carros, sí. Uh, así, like that. If it's all about carros, sí. Es posible. Okay. Vale, bueno. O, uh, otras ideas. Otra persona, Kathy. Um, realmente me gusta vivir en Scottsdale. Me gustan las, las hermosas flores de los arbustos y las vistas de las montañas. También me gusta el clima cálido, pero me alegro no tener que trabajar afuera, afuera oh. en el verano. También me gustan las clases de baile en línea y otros ejercicios en el centro para personas mayores de Scottsdale, Scottsdale Senior Center, y las clases de español a través de Zoom. Estoy aprendiendo mucho español. 
Pero Ovido Mucho. En invierno, hay demasiada gente aquí y demasiado tráfico, pero el tráfico no es tan malo en el verano. Oh, no, en verano es mucho mejor. Yeah. <laughs> um, en junio, visité a mi hermana en Redondo Beach, cerca de Los Ángeles. No me gustaría vivir allí. <laughs> Hay demasiado gente viviendo cerca de la playa. El tráfico es malo y es difícil encontrar un lugar para estacionar un automóvil. Hard mm -hmm. to find a parking place near the beach. El clima es agradable. Agradable allí. That's it. Sí, sí el clima sí es agradable. Pero sí a uh, manejar con un montón de, de personas muy locas es, uh, es horrible, ¿no? Uh, y a uh, manejar con todo el mundo. Uh, tarda mucho tiempo manejar a, al súper, al, al doctor, a cualquier lugar. Uh, sí, es difícil manejar. Tarda mucho tiempo. It takes a really long time. Tarda mucho tiempo manejar en Los Ángeles. Uh, exacto. Bien. Oh, how, however, I would like to move with Karen to Hawaii if we ever decided. <laughs> <laughs> Real trip. <laughs> Eso es, sí. Uh, uh, sí. Uh, muy bien. Uh, and good use of demasiado, Kathy. You did some tricky uses of demasiado. Excelente. Ok. Vale. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias. ¿Quién más? Who else? Who else? ¿Quién más? ¿Quién más? Pat. My gist is I've lived in both New York and Denver, and I would not live in New York. Ah. So, ok. Después de un año en Nueva York, no me gustaría vivir allá. Hay mucha gente, ruido en tráfico. Me gustan los museos, teatros, y otras atracciones interesantes y culturales en la ciudad. Pero preferiría ser una visita a Nueva York en lugar de un residente. Me gustaría volver y vivir en Denver, Colorado. Es una ciudad grande, pero hay barrios bonitos para vivir. Las montañas son magníficas y ofrecen muchas oportunidades recreativas durante todo el año. Me gusta el cambio de estaciones en los inviernos no son muy largos. La ciudad tiene parques hermosas, un zoológico en varios museos. So there's sí. still a lot of culture in Denver. And I like the sí. seasons. And the winters aren't long like Wisconsin, but I didn't go into that. <laughs> Así es, sí. Tengo, tengo unos amigos que viven cerca de Denver y siempre me dicen que aunque sí uh, nieva, en el invierno, aunque sí nieva mucho, uh, la nieve no permanece mucho tiempo en el suelo. ¿sí? Uh, está aquí y entonces pff, se va sí. uh, uh, rápidamente. Uh, así ellos me dicen. Me... Así. My vecinos, when we lived there, my neighbors, and I can't remember the word, they would sweep the snow with a broom. Oh, they, my were, old. <laughs> they were two older grandma kind of people, and they didn't shovel. They would just go out there with their broom, and I found that so fascinating. Barrer. Barria, barria. They would sweep. Barria. No, it's not Midwestern white snow. Barria la nieve. Barria la nieve. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, a bad storm. Sí. We live there five years, so I mean, they can have a bad storm, but not ordinarily. He visitado Denver, pero uh, durante, durante el verano, entonces no tengo la experiencia de viajar en Colorado durante el invierno, pero me imagino si tienes que manejar en las montañas cerca de Colorado. Es otra cosa, es otra cosa, ¿no? Uh, ok, vale, muchísimas gracias. Y bueno, and I want to say ahead of time, Beth, if you don't feel like talking because you got the little cough, do whatever you feel comfortable with tonight. Ok, ¿quién, quién, quién? ¿Quién tiene algo más? Otra idea, hay otra idea. Federico, bien. So I'll quickly talk about... <clears throat> fact that I lived in Hawaii for two years and I liked it but there's reasons I like the desert better uh -huh. okay. <laughs> and mi opinion Hawaii es bonito pero no me encantó vivir allí porque no tiene las animales or las plantas del desierto sin embargo however me encanto la gente, la universidad, mis profesores, las playas. I didn't mention the sorority girls, but that's important. <laughs> para dos años. <laughs> <laughs> bien, bien, Hawaii. Wow, Federico, has vivido en muchos lugares. Sí. Wow, qué interesante. Okay. Hawaii y Australia. Pero ¿por qué no te gustan las plantas, la flora de Hawaii? Sí, me gusta, sí, pero... Sí, pero no tanto como aquí. Pero prefiero um, las plantas y, y las animales de desierto. Ok, bien. I, I need a little coaching on... Um, Gustaría versus Encanto. So one of those you can't use. One of them <clears throat> talks more about emotion than just personal preference, right? I mean, can you, when can I use Encanto and when can't I? And when can't I use uh, Gustaría? Okay. Um. Okay, I'll take the easier part of that first. The easier part is, me gustaría, we use with activities, not stuff. Got it. Okay. Por ejemplo, y es buena pregunta, Federico. Por ejemplo, uh, no se dice, ah, me gustaría un vaso de agua. I would like a glass of water. No. Me gustaría pedir, I would like to order. Bien. Me gustaría pedir un vaso de hora. O me gustaría uh, beber, actividad, un vaso de agua. Uh, me gustaría visitar uh, el Polo Norte. I would like to visit the North Pole. Me gustaría... Siempre con una actividad, un verbo en infinitivo. Siempre. Siempre. ¿Ok? Vale. There's the easy part. Encanto is a noun. So we would use encanto como, por ejemplo, a, 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 el encanto, el encanto, el encanto de una banda de mariachis es la variedad de, es la combinación de todos los instrumentos. Encanto we use as a noun, it, but it comes from encantar, and you use encantar really in the same way that you use gustar. We do use both encantar and gustar to talk about preferences. We absolutely do. The only difference really between 
encantar and gustar is level and intensity. Encantar es como decir en inglés, I love it. Me encanta. Ah, ah, te, por ejemplo, te gusta, te gusta la comida china. Do you like, do you like Chinese food? Te gusta la comida china. Ah, sí, me encanta. I love it. You're saying not just I like it. You're even saying, you're even putting it above, me gusta mucho. <laughs> me encanta. I love it. Okay. Uh, so, me encantaría, kind of like gustaría, we usually use it with activities, with a verb. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> if you use encanto as a noun, it means I'm enchanting to somebody, <laughs> which I'm sure I am to somebody, <laughs> but <laughs> not a frequent thing to say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. It's enchanting. I just have to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, does that answer your questions about those two, Fred? Yes. Or no? Yeah, it does. Okay, I, I seek not to muddy the waters any further than they are muddied because sometimes the waters are kind of muddied and that's okay. It's not, it doesn't help control my wife, but it does. <laughs> <make> it <laughs> <laughs> Bien. Bueno, gracias, gracias. Otras ideas del grupo. Otras ideas, otros lugares. Okay, bueno, Juanita, dinos algo, tell us something. My jest has to is basically uh, any place with a beach. <laughs> so, creo que un lugar con una playa es el mejor lugar para vivir. Newport Beach or el Mediterráneo. <laughs> Me da igual. <laughs> Me da igual. Me gusta mucho. All the same to me. Me da igual. Perfecto. Okay. Continúa. Uh, me gustan, me gustan la mar y el sol. Me gusta mucho el estilo de vida allí. El estilo, estilo de vida de la playa es tranquilo y simple. En, en la playa, mi ropa que uso son baratos. Mis zapatos que son san, sandalias me encantaría ser una playa ahora. <laughs> ah, bien. Me encantaría estar en una playa ahora. Oh, sí, ahora especialmente. Mm. Ah, con mucha agua, con muchísima agua. Ah, eso sí. Um, bien. Y es verdad, creo que, creo que es verdad que hay un estilo de vida en la playa. Vivir en la playa, visitar la playa, es un estilo de, de vivir. Es así, es, es imposible sentir el estrés en la sí. playa. Siempre es, es un lugar uh, donde se puede relajarte ¿sí? uh, muy fácilmente. Me gusta, sí. sí. Por eso es tan popular. Uh, Mucha gente. Para, para muchísimas personas, sí, es, es, es un placer pasar el tiempo en la playa. Bueno, gracias. Ah, ¿Hay otras ideas de otros lugares? Jenna, dinos. Okay. Um, I would move to a place that has a lot of diversity. So, no me mudaría a estados sin diversidad. Para mí, ejemplos de diversidad son... Hay grupos, um, hay diferentes grupos étnicos, 
hay museos de artes, jardines botánicos, granjas orgánicas, uh. y también muy importante, está cerca del mar. Mm. Por eso no quiero vivir en muchos de los estados de los, los Estados Unidos, especialmente en el sureste o el este, como Montana, Idaho, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nevada, Wyoming, Oklahoma. <risa> eh, Una lista. Y, y, y mi sobrina y su familia vive en Santa Rosa, California. Me gustaría vivir allá. Esta ciudad tiene muchos de mis requisitos y está más o menos 30 minutos del mar. Mm. Más o menos 30 minutos, sí. Santa Rosa es, es un pueblo muy precioso. Sí, uh -huh. uh, um, pasé un día, dos días en Santa Rosa, una, una vez en mi juventud y uh, fue, fue un placer, sí. La diversidad es algo importante y por eso muchas veces uh, me gustan mucho las ciudades como Chicago, como Nueva York, por, uh, uh, como, lo, uh, como San Francisco, po porque hay muchos grupos uh, de de mucha gente, de muchas razas. Hay, hay, sí, hay, hay una gran variedad de, de comidas, de sí. música. Uh, eh, 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 es como viajar a, a, a otro país, ¿no? Uh, y sí, es... Esa idea me gusta mucho, sí. Bien, uh, la variedad es, es muy esencial en, en la vida. Bien, gracias. Sí, en el sur, sí, en la Florida. Tengo muchos parientes que viven en Florida y uh, ay, no me gusta, no me gusta Florida. Yo sé que es un estado muy popular, especialmente para los jubilados. Pero, pero, la cantidad de insectos es, oh, es una pesadilla y son de este tamaño, de así. Son como, son como gatitos, son, es, no, no lo soporto, no lo soporto. Pero, pero, tengo parientes, tengo una, una pariente, en, especialmente mi cuñada, que es, es gran persona, mi cuñada que vive en Florida, uh, a ella le encanta nadar con los manatíes. Oh, really? sí, sí, y desde su niñez, cuando ella era niña de como cinco años, siete años, nadaba con los manatíes. Mm. Y a uh, bueno, siempre hay algo de interés para todas las personas en todos los estados. Y por eso a, a ella le gusta tanto Florida, ¿sí? Uh, y los manatíes son, hmm, son animales en peligro de extinción, creo. Sí. sí. ¿sí? sí. Uh, porque muchas veces uh, tienen dificultades con evitar... Uh, las uh, lanchas y los motores de las lanchas de lo, you know, los barcos y uh, bueno así pero a mí no me, ay, no no lo soporto sí ay, en Florida ay, y ahora son hay pitones también hay pito no no hay no hay serpiente es como aquí hay pitones, there are pythons, <risa> que viven en Florida ahora. No, no es un horror. Uh, <risa> cansan, cansan. Pagan, le, sí, les pagan a la gente para cazar a los pitones. Es, es yeah. una locura. Mm. Pues, 
pero es una especie así eh, invasiva, ¿sí? Uh, no he, no, no, los pitones no son animales nativos a, a la Florida. Ok. Uh, bueno, otra idea. ¿Hay otra idea? Susana, dinos algo nuevo. Okay, so basically I, I would not like to live in Alaska, even though it's beautiful, because of the sun or lack of too much. <gasps> yeah. And I would love to live in Maine. Uh, I used to spend summers there. So um, Alaska es un estado hermoso, pero no me gustaría vivir ahí. Los veranos son demasiados cort cortos? cortos. 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 Y Short. hay demasiado nieve. Más importante para mí es la luz del sol. Sunshine. I hope that's what that means. Uh, a veces sí, sí. hay no luz del sol durante días y días. Y otro tiempo está oscuro durante días y días. No puedo uh, tolerar esos extremos. Ex See, I can't roll my R's. Extremos. Me gustaría vivir en Maine. Me encanta el océano, las playas, la comida. Tengo muchos recuerdos de mis veranos en la isla donde mi madre nació. Ah, ella nació oh. en Maine. Sí, mi madre. Ah, qué interesante. Sí, um, mi abuelo was a lobsterman. Oh. On this island in Maine. And we Muy spent pesca. every summer there. Pescadero. Pescadero. De langostas. Uh -huh. Ah. Lobster is, it's not langostino, is it? Uh, another language. Langostino is un poquito más pequeño, creo, sí. Uh, 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 tengo que... Uh, sí, a ver, sí. Um, bien, sí, uh, langosta. Uh, langostino sí. más pequeño, sí. Langosta, ah, langosta. Langosta, gracias. Langosta. Bien. Langosta, muy bien. Uh, bueno, Federico debe de saber esto. Uh, bueno, hay luz todavía a las 11 de la noche, ¿no? ¿Sí? Todavía, durante el verano todavía tienen luz uh -huh. a las 11 de la noche, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. ¿En Australia? En, en, en Ala Alaska. Alaska, sí. Sí. Sí, y uh, uh, me imagino que es difícil dormirse, uh, du no, durante, durante los meses del verano, ¿verdad? Sí, hay que, hay que cubrir, hay que cubrir los ojos, ¿sí? Con una mascarita, como una mascarita para los ojos, ¿sí? Hay que... Vendar los ojos, you gotta uh, wrap up your eyes. Yeah, yeah, eso. Ok, a ver. Uh, bueno, gracias. Qué buenas ideas. Uh, fíjense en, uh, en, en esta idea. Muchas veces tenemos, tenemos uh, recuerdos muy cariñosos de los lugares de la niñez. O del, uh, de la juventud, ¿no? Uh, tenemos un cariño, en efecto, un cariño para los lugares donde pasábamos muchísimo tiempo cuando éramos niños o uh, así. Bien, sí, me imagino, como Maine, ¿sí? Si, si viajabas mucho a Maine uh, de niña, entonces sería muy normal uh, uh, querer a uh, uh, Maine como en la mente un lugar ideal uh, para vivir y uh, quizás no en invierno, pero no. el invierno no es tan difícil en Maine 
Sabes, Susan? Uh, I was only there once. And they yeah. and on the island, and they did have to get it, uh, an icebreaker to cut mm. a path. Because we had to take a ferry from the mainland to the island. And they did have to get an icebreaker to get us there. Un ferry, sí. Sí. Es, es así en el... En el extremo norte de Michigan, tengo un cuñado también que vive en el, casi está en Canadá. Y, yeah. <laughs> y, uh, y el, la primavera no empieza hasta, hasta el 15 de, de mayo, el 20 de mayo generalmente. Todavía está nevando muchas veces en, en mayo. Wow. Y, wow, qué difícil. Ok. Ah, a ver, bueno, hay otra idea. ¿Alguien tiene otra idea o no? Ah, bueno, Esteban. Uh, You're no muted. te puedo oír. You're muted. Lo siento. Ah. Ah. Mejor. Uh. It's the difference between here and Hawaii also. Uh, <laughs> y, uh, si yo era un hombre rico, uh, yo lo uh, preguntaría a mi esposa sobre la idea uh, de mudarnos a Hawaii. Uh, es la tierra de mi nacimiento. Uh, y uh, en lugar de estar aquí en Arizona. Uh, sí. Uh, aunque aunque eh, el costo de vivir es muchísimo barato aquí, a mí no, no me gusta uh, los fríos inviernos tenemos en Arizona. Eh, es un lugar loco. Wow. Sí. Uh, ¿Cre eh, ¿Crees que hace frío aquí en el invierno? Sí. Sí. Wow. sí. No, no me gusta. Uh, At all. <laughs> para nada. Ah, sí, para, para nada. nada. Not at all. Para nada. Y um, en Hawaii, uh, todo uh, es uh, uh, templado it, it's, uh, o refresco uh, por el mejor uh, parte del año. Uh, y uh, yo no viviera. Uh, 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 más cerca el mar we're not live near the ocean pero en la tierra alta uh, en el campo en the countryside donde uh -huh. la, uh, el clima es fresco y um, no es necesario uh, tener el aire condicionado y uh, la cali calefacción heat sí mm -hmm. sí, uh, sí y lo que lo que lo que más importante, no hay multitudes, multitudes de gente, turistas <laughs> o tráfico, ¿sí? <laughs> La cantidad de turistas uh, que vienen aquí en, en noviembre oh, y a diciembre, wow, oh, ay, horrible, horrible. Es, es muy difícil sí, sí, sí. Y, y todo es difícil durante el invierno aquí, todo es difícil. Uh, Ir al doctor es difícil. Ir al súper es difícil. Hay colas, hay colas en el súper que ay, son, son un horror. Uh, y, y la gente sí quejándose siempre de todo. Ah, bien, ok. Uh, bueno, pero también en Hawaii. Bueno, muy interesante, muy interesante. Uh, pero cuesta, cuesta mucho vivir en Hawaii, ¿no? Oh, el God. costo de, de vivir, Everything. el costo de comprar una casa es... Uh, no. Uh, 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 houses, no. Food, no? terrible. Food, yeah. Taxes are terrible. Uh, gasoline, well, not, well, we've been bad, but, but gasoline to, todo is terrible. Uh, to, to, todo está importado. Imported. Todo yes. está importado, sí. ¿no? Es verdad, sí. Y cuando tienes que importar todo, el precio va a subir. ¿Sí? Eh, es... es lo mismo en Puerto Rico. Ah, bien. Um, 
una amiga mía que nació en Hawaii me dice que uh, es difícil comprar una casa. El, el costo de comprar una casa es algo, wow, es, es, el precio es muy alto, muy alto. Hay que pagar muchísimo depende. para... Depende. Y, sí, depende. Sí, en el campo, si estás en las afueras, quizás no es tan... Sí, es un poco barato, difícil. sí. Bien, bien. Bueno, ok. Gracias. Qué interesante. Bueno, uh, ¿hay más? ¿Hay más o no? ¿No? Bien, bien. Ustedes hicieron muy bien. Wow, you guys did really, really nicely with that. Ok. Uh, me gusta yeah. mucho. Well, uh, sí, Federico. Um, I'm a little bit unclear when I have to use the word hace in front of like frío or something like this. <clears throat> so I had a sentence here. No creo que me gustaría vivir, vivir en un clima que hace frío. Do, when, when do you have to use hace in front of calor or frío? And when, when do you not have to use the word hace? Uh, when you're talking about the weather, en un lugar donde uh, no me gusta, uh, no me gustaría vivir en un lugar donde hace frío. I wouldn't like to live in a place where it's cold. En un lugar donde hace frío. Uh, uh, podría decir, I could say, there are often... Different ways you can mix this up. Okay. Sería posible también decir, uh, no me gustaría vivir en un lugar con el clima frío. Okay. Por ejemplo, um, hacer frío siempre refiere a... Um, a uh, lo que hace el, el tiempo, what your the weather does, yeah. So a lot, um, uh, but you could say, me gustaría es posible decir me gustaría vivir en un lugar caluroso, a warm place. Yeah. Okay. Es posible, sí. Ah. Uh, There are often a few different ways you can mix these up, but hace frío always refers to weather. In Spanish, the weather often does things. There, are, Okay, the, the verbs that you use most often to talk about weather are hacer, and hacer with a noun. Uh, hace sol, hace calor, hace frío, hace viento. Uh, bien, sí, uh, hace fresco, it's cool. Uh, también estar. Está nublado. It's cloudy. Está soleado. But estar we tend to use with descriptions, not nouns. Okay? Hace sol. Literally, it makes sun. Hace viento. It literally makes wind. Uh, hace calor. It makes heat. But if we turn it into... Uh, Está, está caluroso, está ventoso. If we use a, an adjective, we might use estar. So, hacer for weather. También also estar with weather, but with description words, not nouns. And many, many, many times even hay. But again, I will have to be combined like hace is with a noun. Entonces, hace sol, it's sunny. Hay sol, there's sun out today. Uh, hay viento, there's wind. Okay. Uh, hay nubes, not nublado, cloudy. Hay nubes, there are clouds. Yeah. Uh, so kind of, I would say you could call them a big three for weather or hace or estar or hay. 
Generally okay. one of those. And then you have your precipitation verbs, you know, like llover, nevar, uh, uh, things like that. Okay. Bien. Hay otra pregunta. Oh, no. No, thank you. Gracias. Okay. De nada, de nada. Pregunta. Uh, sí, ¿Cómo, Kathy, dime. ¿Cómo se dice the storm en español? Oh, una tempestad de viento. Uh, no creo que haya... Uh, uh, he leído de vez en cuando Habub, pero Habub es de, del árabe, ¿no? Uh, es del árabe. Y uh, uh, creo que sí se usa a veces en, en español. Por el origen, Tor pero tormenta de arena, tor uh, tormenta de tormenta okay. de polvo, así, sí, generalmente. Uh, buena pregunta. Gracias. Uh, y es difícil manejar también durante una tormenta de arena y es, es peligroso. Uh, bueno, ok. Um, voy a enviarles un enlace, un link uh, a otro vídeo, el, el nuevo vídeo uh, para la semana que viene. Es un vídeo también con un tema. It will also be something with a theme. Pero no se trata de la gramática. No se trata de la gramática. It's not about grammar. Uh, you will have some little helpful things about grammar with that video. But, pero, 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 pero. Uh, aquí, aquí lo tienes. Here you have it. Aquí lo tienes. Uh, esta, esta joven muy preciosa. Uh, se llama Rachel y Rachel tiene un canal de YouTube y ella es estadounidense, es estadounidense, pero lleva como cuatro o cinco años uh, viviendo en uh, España. Así que habla español muy bien y uh, Originalmente ella nació en Texas y ya no quiere vivir en Texas. <risa> quiere vivir solamente en España por muchas razones, for many reasons. Y ella va a hablar de un tema interesante. Y ustedes van a hablar de un tema relacionado con esto. Ah, el tema de su video es... ¿Cómo arruinaron el pan en Estados Unidos? How they wrecked bread. How they ruined bread. How they messed up, screwed up bread in the United States. Y es interesante. Ella tiene ideas muy interesantes. Y uh, uh, les puedo decir, I can tell you, les puedo decir que cuando estoy en un lugar como en España, como una cantidad de pan, ay, pan, 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 ay, me gusta tanto, me, me encanta, realmente me encanta muchísimo el pan de España. Ella sí tiene razón cuando ella habla del pan. En ese lugar, uh, she's going to talk about why we wreck it, uh, why it is better elsewhere in other places. Uh, and so you are going to think about and come prepared to talk about something that's just not like it used to be. You know, how many, I'm sure you've, there have been things in your past maybe from your childhood, uh, maybe not that long ago. Um, things that just aren't the same anymore. Things that aren't as good as they used to be. Things that you went to another country and you said, wow, they do this way better than we do. So 
you won't necessarily talk about the bread, although you'll totally understand why she's talking about the bread. Uh, but um, I would like you to kind of riff on that idea of what is just not as good as it used to be. And um, you'll get the idea when you listen to her. Uh, you are going to have some things to help you along with that video. ¿Y dónde están mis apuntes? Where are my notes? Okay, a ver. A ver. Eso no, eso no. Momentito. Tengo que buscar aquí mis apuntes. Um, because it is a longish video, it's not crazy long, but... Uh, Aquí. El pan rebanado. You are going to have a a set uh, a file, a file of um, things to help you navigate this video. So ideally, how I would like you to approach it is listen to the video once with no prep, just to get the big idea, and you will. You will understand the big idea, even if you don't know all the vocabulary. You'll get a pretty good handle on it. Uh, then go back and take a look at this. Uh, the first is going to talk about some structures you're going to hear her use. Because she lives in Spain and not Latin America, they like this a ah, or an or a combination with ado ido verbs. And I just show you what that means. So I've grabbed a bunch of verb structures and you'll just see what those structures mean. Those words hang together and I show you what they mean, okay? So that just takes that like off your plate if you find that hard to listen for, okay? Uh, Latin America uses less of this, but it's not like totally disused. It's used also in Latin America, but... Uh, it's a very favored thing in Spain. Anyway, so you'll get that. That's the only thing that really has some grammar clues. Everything else is going to be vocab you need to navigate your way uh, uh, through different vocabulary words right through to the end. Some of them will be single vocabulary words like masa, right? Uh, uh, some will be... Uh, chunks of words like tener en cuenta. All right. So the second time through, look through, actually look through the vocab files and kind of have that handy as you watch. So you don't have to look up a whole bunch of words. Okay. And um, then the third time through, you should be able to fill in more of the holes in the Swiss cheese, yeah? And and get a super complete picture of what she's talking about, yeah? Um, and what you'll be uh, looking to do is uh, talking about, or what you will try to prep for next week is uh, some little thing, kind of like what you did with, uh, you know, talking about a place that uh, you would prefer, except that the theme is going to be uh, more along the lines of, uh, you know, what has changed? Where What is something in our life where the quality of something has changed or the way of uh, uh, doing something, you know, uh, our way of doing something has changed. How did I, I actually wrote this a little more. Ah, come prepared to discuss something that has changed a lot over the years. Is there something uh, or some product or some process that is just not the same as it used to be? Or, uh, it, or something that is much better or done much better elsewhere? Okay, bien. El tema de la semana que viene. That'll be our, our theme for next week. And I'm sure you'll come up with something. Okay. Bueno, a continuar. Vamos a seguir con 
estas ideas de los verbos confusos. We're going to kind of move on with these. And normally I don't do a lot with translation, but that's kind of the one efficient way to do this. So I'll show you our thing here. Uh, we're going to look at the throw verbs first, but we're going to take them in the two categories because really a chat is its own category. It just is. Uh, all three of those verbs, <coughs> uh, echar, lanzar, tirar, los tres, the three of those, can be used interchangeably just for that whole idea of, of, you know, toss something, throw it, okay? Uh, they can be kind of interchangeable in many, many cases. Um, but echar is kind of in its own category because it means more than that. But even when it's used in kind of these colloquial phrases, echar, uh, somewhere in the background, that idea of throw kind of comes into the general meaning, even though it is part used as part of colloquial phrases, okay, that can't be translated exactly. However, lanzar and tirar are much more uh, uh, formulaic. They're much more throw kind of verbs. Nice thing about lanzar is that if you read any kind of techie articles or listen to news, uh, news shows or podcasts about techie things, Whenever you're launching a company, uh, that verb lanzar, to throw, also is used for to launch, meaning you're starting off, you're debuting something brand new. So uh, I always used to think of lanzar as throwing a lance, like, you know, in, in Olympics uh, or ancient Rome, maybe uh, throwing a lance, a javelin. Uh, you know, lanzar even looks like lance, yeah? But, you know, lanzar often kind of is like a real heave-ho kind of throw. <laughs> you know, think heave-ho. Like, you know, if you got a lance, you can't just toss it to somebody. It's, it's heave-ho to make that sucker go. So lanzar is kind of more like that, and but it's also used for launch. And tirar, again, can be used for just talking about tossing the ball around with the grandkids in the backyard. But very, very often, very often, tirar comes into play when we want to talk about getting rid of something, tossing it out, yeah, throwing it away, throwing it out, tossing it out. If that is the idea you want to convey, tirar is your verb of preference. Okay. So when we talk about getting rid of things in your closet, when we talk about uh, tossing anything with the garbage, when we talk about littering, <laughs> uh, yeah, tirar is the favored verb. So there are little nuances, you know? Yeah, sure, it's throw, but... Kind of in different ideas. Okay. Entonces, ¿cómo se dice? How would you say an idea like kids like to throw a ball in the park? A los niños or a chicos, les, depende. Les, les gusta lanzar una les, pelota en el parque? Eso es, sí. Uh, a los niños o a los chicos, si sí, depende, si sí, les gusta uh, lanzar o igualmente tirar. Les gusta lanzar, les gusta ir, uh, les gusta echar también, pero especialmente les gusta lanzar, les gusta tirar uh, una pelota en el parque. Bien. Bueno. Marilyn? Una actividad, sí, bien. Una pregunta. If, um, if uh, you were going to say the kids were going to throw uh, a ball in the park in the garbage, you would use tirar. Tirar, sí. On our garbage can, they use the word 
al tirar. Ah, ok. Tirar la basura. Ah, ah, sí. Ah, es, sí, sería posible. Basurero, pero hay otros términos en varios países. Sí, también. Pues bueno, buena observación. Muy bien. Ok, gracias. Uh, entonces, um, if we're talking about this thing, you know, ok, it's hard to throw a football. ¿Cómo se dice? Es muy difícil lanzar. Es difícil lanzar. O aquí, ah, otra vez, tirar, posible. Pos es difícil lanzar, es uh, difícil uh, uh, lanzar o tirar una... Un balón de fútbol. Un balón o una pelota, balón también, balón, fantástico. Un balón o una pelota de fútbol, fútbol americano, ¿no? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ok. Bueno. Vale. Ah. Pero. But it's más easier. Fácil, más fácil. Pero es más fácil. Lanzar la pelota de béisbol. Lanzar la pelota de béisbol. O oh, un béisbol, ¿sí? Béisbol. Un béisbol, sí. O uh, una pelota de béisbol, sí. Eso, eso es. Muy bien. Muy bien. Lanzar, tirar, no hay gran diferencia, no hay gran diferencia. Uh, sometimes we can use them just even, Stephen, exchange them out however you want to. Como quieran, however you want. Uh, Meta is launching its new Threads site this week. Ah. Meta okay. está lanzando. Can you say está lanzando? Um, ooh, es posible, está lanzando. Uh, sometimes it's best to just keep that in plain on presente. So let's look at the two ways you could say it, but there's going to be a tiny difference. Uh, continue. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. No, uh, no. Su sitio nuevo and then threads. I didn't know where to throw threads, so I put it in threads, parentheses sí. after sitio. Su nuevo sitio, su nuevo sitio Threads. ¿Qué se llama? Uh, sí, su nuevo sitio, su uh, nuevo sitio de web. Mm. Uh, sí, uh, su nuevo app. Mm. App, sí. Una palabra prestada es a loaned word, sí. Uh, threads, esta semana, this week, right? Sí. Hay... Um, hay una diferencia muy sutil en está lanzando o lanza. Está lanzando means they're doing it right now, which mm. you kind of could say right now because this is still a new thing and they're still tweaking it and they're still working on it. But remember, uh, recuerden, por favor, just remember that we use está lanzando when it's really going on in real time as we're speaking. And because you could legitimately say there are a whole bunch of engineers working on this stuff now and tweaking it a whole bunch of times because it's new, está lanzando would work, okay? Because it's right now, right? Uh, but a lot of times in English where we say, you know, they are launching somebody, the the better choice might be just to go with lanza, right? Okay. We usually okay. reserve, está lanzando for things that are happening as we are talking about it in real time. And in this case, you could say either, but it has a connotation. Okay. Está lanzando, wow, those engineers are burning the midnight oil working on perfecting that right now. Right, but Lanza also works. Okay, I'll, I'll be honest. I forgot about the esta and the ando and the being stuff right now. So I wanted to mention this to you last week that I find these translations really helpful to bring back those things that we talked about a while ago that I've kind of forgotten. And so it right. kind of forces me to do that again. Besides introducing new words, so I gracias. appreciate. Muchas gracias. Gracias, muchas gracias, gracias a ti, gracias a ti. Uh, you know, and, and this is the thing. 
How, and then this kind of goes to the heart of that little article I sent to you on the art of translation. You know, we will typically say, well, you know, this is where this thing is working or, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, my pet is drinking water or something, but you know, that, that we, we do that present progressive in English. It's a favored structure in English, but sometimes in Spanish, the easier route, which is just a plain old presente really is more of a workhorse. Yeah. And that, um, Está lanzando uh, that pr progressive has a specific job of talking of, about what is actually going on while we are talking in real time right now. And it, it doesn't always have that meaning in English. It might, but it sometimes doesn't in English. You know, English is kind of, we have our funny, peculiar things in our language when plenty of them. Okay. Vale. Bueno, Scottsdale launched, and now we're going to take lanzar. Es un verbo muy regular. We're going to use lanzar en el pasado. Uh, Scottsdale launched a new project downtown. Scottsdale. Lanzó. Lanzó. Un nuevo proyecto. Un, eh, un, uh, un nuevo proyecto uh, en el centro. En el centro, oh, not al en el centro. centro. No, no es al we would not use al. Uh, al would be to the. Okay. Yeah. Al indica, uh, al se usa con verbos de movimiento. Well, pues sí. Lanzar es como verbo de movimiento, no? Uh, pero mm, this indicates in a place. So it remains en el centro. Yeah. Not, uh, not del centro. Del, del, centro. Una, uh, oh, del centro, ah, posible, del centro, posible. That could be done, yeah. Uh, you know, lanzó with ah would indicate really physically throwing something. Mm. <laughs> yeah? Uh, sí, uh, como uh, lanzó una pelota a mi hijo. Uh, I, I threw a ball to my kid or at my kid, yeah? Um, yeah, so we wouldn't want al centro here. En el centro, sí. Uh, un nuevo proyecto del centro. A new downtown project. Posible, possibly. That, yeah, you could make that work. Un, un nuevo proyecto del centro. A new downtown project. But not saying in downtown, but it's a downtown project. That works too. Okay. Uh, Ahora, now, ooh, ooh, fíjense, fíjense, notice, 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 throw out, throw out, get rid of, yes, get sir. rid of, bien, uh, we're throwing out the old paperwork. Tiramos. Tiramos. Lo, mm, ooh, old paperwork, mm, los viejos documentos, no? Pero... Los viejos documentos. Uh, tiramos los viejos documentos. Viejo es uh, uh, old. Uh, you always learn that word means old. And in this case, it's super, super good to use viejos because old often, viejo is often used to indicate something that's worn out, not of much use anymore, kind of icky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, viejos documentos. That old, so I don't need that stuff anymore. Los viejos documentos. Okay. Uh, okay, people. now, on, on that one, I said, estamos tirando, because I figured we are doing it right now. If we are doing <laughs> it right now, if, if that is what you mean, then estamos tirando is great. Sí. Depende. Depende de la situación. It really depends on the situation. Yeah. If you mean we're throwing it out sometime this week, then tiramos is better. If you're talking about I'm doing this right now, estamos tirando, perfecto. Perfecto. It all depends on the idea you want to convey. Okay. Uh, people should not throw out trash. La gente. La gente. No, no debe. debe tirar. No debe tirar. La basura. Uh, basura. Okay. Uh, 
en la autopista, en la autopista, en el camión, or, no, en el camión no, en el camino, en el camino, en, uh, en la calle, en la autopista, todo bien, ¿sí? Uh, uh, en el camión. Sí, 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 dime, Kathy. Could, could you say la gente debe no tirar basura? Ah, uh, uh, no, no debe tirar. Okay. No debe de tirar. If you say debe no tirar, it means must not. Uh, okay. you don't pero, do pero no, hay que usar no en frente del verbo conjugado. Okay. Es mejor, it's better. Ah, okay. uh, no debe, no debe tirar. Sí. It, uh, it, it is not a thing in Spanish to really stick uh, a no in between a conjugated verb and an infinitive. That will sound off. Will they understand you? I, probably, but it will sound funny to them. Uh, no debe tirar. Bien? Okay. Vale. Bueno. Lanzar, tirar. Many times we can just use them whichever way, but if you mean throw out, tirar is your thing you want. Okay. Vale. Uh, echar es otra cosa. Echar is, hoy oh, es un animalito. It is a little animal. Es camellón. It's like a chameleon. Echar is used in a lot of colloquial phrases. But even behind these colloquial uh, phrases, even behind the scenes, that feel of, of throwing or tossing or a thing going through the air is <laughs> kind of behind even the col many of the colloquial uh, phrases that we use a chat with. And why that verb got to be so special, I have no ni idea. I got no clue, but it is. Uh, but echar always has this kind of rolling feel, you know? It's like, ah, toss, toss. Uh, and it's used in a lot of different ways. So let's take a look. Uh, you know, your purpose with that echar video was to show you lots of ways that we use echar. See, sí, Janet. And before you start, could you also um, talk about Sometimes it's confusing to figure out why it was a charlie. Oh, you know, see. Some, some of we're going to talk about a charlie with this little puppy here. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the short and the long of it, Janet, is that if you, if you skip a le with a char, ah, they'll still know what you mean, but. It'll sound a little more natural using it, but we'll we'll see that in the next, okay. uh, yeah, that next one right after that. But this first one, not so much. Okay, give me a hand. We say, give me a hand. They say, hey, throw me a hand. Yeah. Echas una mano con estos muebles. Okay. Echame una mano con estos muebles. Sí. Uh, échame una mano. Échame una mano es eh, un mandato. That's a command. You know, if you're talking to your kids <laughs> and you want this done and it's like no fooling around, échame una mano. Give me a hand. Now, now, if you're talking to somebody and you don't want to really, uh, you know, sometimes this thing of giving a command um makes things pretty kind of on the pushy side in Spanish. So somebody might rephrase this to make it less pushy, but they'll still use echar una mano. So they might rephrase it as a question instead of a command and ask it this way. Uh, Me echas una mano oh. hmm. con estos muebles. So now I'm bringing this up because sometimes if you're doing the pretty please routine, 
Yeah. It's a little nicer and you'll get a really sure I'll pitch in response by phrasing it as, would you, would you lend me a hand? Because instead of telling them to do it, <laughs> you know, it's asking them. So sometimes it is preferred, especially in Mexican Spanish, to turn that instead of a command to turn it into a, would you do this for me? And then it sounds like pretty please. Okay. Bien. Okay. A ver. Uh, add salt to the soup is like saying toss in a little bit of that salt. Yeah. And the question that Janet brought up often, wow, comes up with this one. Because often it's used as a le in there with echar. So we'll show you how. What would be a command for echar? To say add. Turn ech uh, echar into a command. Echa or echa. Echa. Yeah, echa. Echa if it's usted, but, you know, echa if it's somebody mm -hmm. in your family, right? Echa. Echa. Uh, but often, often you'll hear it this way. Échale. Mm -hmm. Échale sal a la sopa. Hey, toss a little salt in there. Oh, this isn't too far from what we say in English, is it? Uh, toss a little of something of this, toss a little something of that, and you just kind of throw it in the pot. Think of grandma cooking. Did your grandma ever measure anything? My grandma hardly ever met. No, my, my grandmother measured nothing. A handful of this, a pinch of that, and it always turned out fine. But Echa, what is that little hangnail? Le? Okay. What is it that you're adding? It. It. In this case, to it, to it. salt. That's salt. the thing you're adding. But what are you adding the salt to? to. The soup. The le is really kind of a a, a, a backhanded uh, reference to the soup. Where am I? Uh, what am I? Why am I using sal? <laughs> Where is that sal going to end up? Sal is going to end up in la, in la sopa. Uh, so that le is really kind of a reference back to la sopa. And you'll often hear it phrased that way. Echale. Uh, and the le is talking about whatever it is that is going to get covered in salt. Es así. It's just that way. Now, if you don't remember that, le, will the world end? Nah, probably not. But does it sound more natural that way? Échale. Yeah. Sounds a little more natural. So, so if you wanted to say, I add, you would say, oh, le echo, le echo uh, sal. A ah, sopa. le echo. Si. Uh, like you're giving somebody, in, uh, you're showing them what you do. Ah, le echo, le echo sal. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, um, uh, esta receta. I add a little salt to this recipe. Uh, uh, you know, whatever the item is. See? ¿Sí? Bien. Um, or uh, a la carne. See? ¿Sí? A la carne. Uh, you know, you're talking about what you've thrown on the barbecue grill. A la parrilla, you know? Um, and right, if you're talking about I do it this way, well, hecho is. Fine, fine, bien, vale, okay. Uh, now, echar, oddly is enough, is a lot of times used with certain verbs, particular verbs, to indicate that something happens like that. And it has to be a really active thing. Uh, you know, it, it won't be used with a verb like pensar. <laughs> it won't be used with a verb like, uh, 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 uy, por ejemplo, uh, ver, you know, see. No, but with really super active things like, uh, you know, running or <laughs> that kind of sound that comes out mm -hmm. like that, you know, all of a sudden. 
a echar is often used that way, and it'll be echar a and infinitivo. And that little structure will sound kind of weird, but it means that that action, whatever is in the infinitivo, it happened like a boom, like, like a big burst of activity, okay? And that burst of activity goes back to the idea of throw, 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 because it happens like boom, like throwing something. So uh, the kids took off running, los niños, Echaron a... Oh, echaron. Echaron a correr. You wouldn't say echaron? I mean, oh, weird um, that echaron. is. Of course you could say empezaron a correr. Claro, yes, you absolutely can say empezaron a correr. They started to run. Okay? But that's kind of vanilla flavor. <laughs> yeah? And, and if you want to spice it up, and kind of make it sound like, you know how people line up at, at a running race and they get their hands on the line and, you know, the butts up in the air and they're waiting for the starting gun. They're waiting for the starting gun at the beginning of the 100 yard dash. Yeah. That's echar a correr. That's it. So, do you not need the A, a los niños in this case? No, no. Because they're the ones who took off like a bat out of hell. <laughs> okay. And they're doing that correr. So it's not like gustar. It's not a verb like gustar or encantar. No, no, no. Uh, los niños echaron a correr. I, uh, first time I ever heard or read, uh, I think I, I probably read it first before I heard it. Uh, I thought, how odd. They threw to run. What the heck does that mean? Well, it means as fast as you could throw something. Yeah. That's how fast it happened. So it's kind of bringing that throw into the picture as telling you how quickly something changed. Yeah. How, how, how much time, is it, if you throw a ball even across the room, does that take very long? No, it happens like that. Right. So that's the idea behind it. And we use it for an idea like he burst out laughing. Oh, pregunta. Sí, dime. Could you um, say los niños se echaron? A Sometimes you do hear. I, I have, I think I have heard some people use it. Yeah. Like, Reflexively. Like throwing themselves sí. to run. Uh, creo que es posible. I think that is possible. Sí. Um, gracias. Uh Another thing that's like that took off running is this idea of just, you know, right from, in your, you know, the, a guffaw. Hmm. Yeah, guffaw. What a great word in English. <laughs> uh, el hecho a reír. And with correr and reír, you often hear this kind of funny structure, but we can't really use it with every single verb. You know, you don't burst out thinking. Marilyn, could you use uh, the word, uh, could you use the word uh, carajadas? In, in, in car, yeah, carcajadas, sí. El se echó a reír a carcajadas. Carcajadas gets the idea of a, <laughs> your whole body is shaking. That's what that means. Yeah. Belly laugh. Okay. Uh, bueno. Okay. Vale. Vamos a... Uh, siguiente, siguiente, siguiente. Uh, when... Um, often when you want to give the idea of they they got rid of this guy, you know, like like a bouncer... Uh, or, you know, anytime they they toss somebody out of an event because the guy is drunk, unruly, or the gal is drunk or unruly, whoever, look at Sam, whoever it may be, uh, toss this guy out. Yeah. Uh, so HR can be used for this idea of somebody getting fired. There is a formal verb, you know, despedir, which means fired, and that's fine. But 
sometimes people just express it instead of saying, uh, you know, despidio, um, a ese tipo, they fired that guy. They'll use echar. Uh, and it's like saying they threw him out. You know, they got rid of that guy. See? Uh, so the boss fired him. El jefe. Uh, see? Uh, le echó. Uh, porque, porque cometió un montón de errores. Cometió muchos errores. Algo así. Yeah. Get rid of. And then this one I really, really, really love. Now, this one you actually hear a lot in restaurants or anytime somebody's got a project that they have totally messed up. Whenever you wreck something to the point where it is unusable, can't drink it, can't eat it, can't use it, it's a mess. Forget I even did this. I have to throw it away. This is a great phrase. Echarse, echarse, siempre, echarse, a perder. Perder by itself means to lose. So echar, throw, throw to lose it. It is so bad, <laughs> you may as well just lose that thing. Lose that thing in slang American, like get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So if somebody is talking about they just burned things to a crisp. <laughs> Los frijoles. They are ruined. Ah. Se echaron a perder. Se echaron a perder. Sí, eso. Uy, a ver. So you wouldn't say, you wouldn't say son or están, you would just say se. No, se echaron a perder. Now, um, okay. Um, los arruinamos. We ruined them. Okay. You could say that. Somebody would understand. Arruinar. Ruined. Means the same thing. But colloquially, like what people really say. Okay. This is what people really say. When they burn something beyond recognition, you know, you cut a hole in something. You didn't mean to cut a hole. Oh, you left the iron on the shirt and let it sit there. And now you got a great big brown mark on your white shirt. When you decide. That's why we use echarse a perder. This is so awful. I have to throw it away. And echar is a throw. So it makes sense. It totally makes sense. Tiene sentido. Tiene sentido. It makes sense. It is so logical. Es muy lógico. Okay. So you're not going to know every little colloquial phrase with echar. But always know that when we use these in colloquial phrases, it means we can't really translate these exactly. But somewhere deep down, muy al fondo, right down to its very core, it's got something to do with throw, throw out of here. Yeah, it somewhere, it makes kind of a grain of sense. Okay, bien. Whether you're tossing it in a recipe or you gotta pitch it in the trash, there's some element of that echar buried in these little colloquial phrases. Which is why they're colorful and they're great. Okay. Y el último grupo. Uy, el último grupo. Last group. Uh, I'm going to go through these kind of quickly. I see we're going past here. The, esto es fácil. This part is easy. It, it, it's mucho más fácil que echar. This is much, much easier than echar. Uh, uh, they talked in the vast, last pair of verbs, they talked about were discutir and platicar. But the emotional feelings connected with these are like opposite. Okay, so instead of saying hablar, decir, contar, all those verbs talk about talking or telling, sometimes we might use these, but discutir almost always comes up 
when you're discussing something in the sense of a logic or a debate oriented argument, not necessarily arguing as in fist fights, <laughs> kind of arguing. I mean, it could be, but usually not. Uh, debating. Yeah, yeah, you know, a legitimate debate. So whenever you're presenting two points of view and they're not the same opinion, they're differing opinions, yeah, like debate wise, discutir is a verb you will hear people use, right? Um, discutir doesn't have to be antagonistic. It can be, but it doesn't have to be, but it's serious. It's serious, okay? Discutir. It's not like water cooler talk, yeah? Mm -hmm. But platicar, that's water cooler talk. Platicar is just, dit, 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 dit. you're talking about nothing, or you're talking about just usual stuff, you know, uh, uh, general thing. Platicar is always chit chat, friendly kind of talk, never really talking about, you know, oh, we disagree about this. No, no not at so nothing about that. So, okay. Uh, oh, uh, politicians discuss these topics in the debate. See, uh, los políticos. Discuten. Discuten. Sí, discuten. Ah, uy, a ver. Discuten uh, estos temas en el debate. Because they're presenting two opposing, differing viewpoints. Discutir. It adds much more color than hablar. Hablar, again, is vanilla. <laughs> yeah? Uh, es de vainilla. Uh, pero discutir, sí, uh, hay emoción, hay punto de vista y uh, otro punto de vista. Bueno, Karen. Would you throw in a phrase like el uno al otro? Because they talk with each other? Quizás. Okay. Quizás, maybe. Es posible, sí. Uh, I just have seen it a lot on Duolingo. They discuss, so. and they discuss with each other. This is one of those that really yeah. can be kind of that reciprocal say. Right. Like se hablan, they talk with each other. Se discute. Right. Es posible. Sí. Sí. Buena pregunta. Okay. Uh, if you want to say about they're arguing something, meaning they don't, they don't see eye to eye on it, uh, uh, we are arguing mm -hmm. becomes... Discutimos. Discutimos. Discutimos, uh, discutimos como, uh, oh, perdón, uh, como uh, resolver o quizás solucionar. Hay dos verbos, sí, solucionar o resolver son equivalentes. Discutimos cómo solucionar uh, este problema. Uh, en el barrio, en nuestro barrio, uh, en nuestra zona, sí, uh, neighborhood might be expressed as zona, as barrio, depende, depende, sí, okay. But discutir is always for kind of weighty, important stuff, important things where one idea will be different from the other idea, okay. Uh, bien, pero platicar, sí, es, son de... Cosas de, de, de poca importancia, yeah? Uh, I always chat, siempre. Platico. Platico. Black. Siempre Black. platico con mis amigos. Uh, sobre uh, sobre, sobre el o de uh, los eventos del día. Sí, bien. Así. Platico, you're just chit-chatting. There's no, I don't think you're right kind of meaning behind it. It's just talking. She tells me, ella me dice, uh, oh, uh, no me dice, me platica. platica. Ella me platica uh, de, de lo que pasa. She tells me, she chit-chats with me about what's going on. Ella me platica de lo que pasa. You know, you could still say, ella me dice, that's fine. Very ella nice. me cuenta, that, that's fine. But an idea that somebody may say, and you may say, whoa, what is that word there? Ella me platica, that just means she's chatting with you. 
eso es, ¿no? Bien, bueno, Marilyn? Susana. Sí. So you wouldn't say so, or sobre. could you say sobre, ¿qué pasa? Es posible. Many times sobre and de can be equally used to say about. But you got to get that low in there, don't you? That infamous low. The lo que pasa has to say. Lo que pasa is the what's happening. The what is not a question. No. So okay. the what becomes a lo que. Okay. Yeah. Could you say sobre que sucede? Or, sobre, uh, uh, sobre lo que sucede. Sí, sí, sí. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, sí, eso sí. Uh, happening or going on can be expressed with pasar. Oh, perdón. Pasar o con uh, suceder. Suceder. Uh, uh, which also means to happen. Sucede. So now if you have to choose between your English brain coming up with one of those two <laughs> words, which one's going to pop into your head first? Pasa. 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 Ocurrir. Ocurrir. No? Sí. Ocurre. 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 Sí. También ocurre. Sí. Ocurrir. Ocurrir. También. Sí. Igual. Yeah. There are lots of ways. So you, yeah, talk about that. But you know, this one is, is such a, a, such an everyday kind of verb that if you're just talking with people, you know, they look at pasan. Lo que sucede, lo que ocurre, iguales, yeah. So there are many ways to, you know, get around to the same idea. Eso es, that is, okay. Uh, para la semana que viene, besides our listening thing about uh, cómo arruinaron el pan, uh, you're also going to get, uh, not the echar video again, but you're also going to get... Um, a little video on another verb that is a problem maker for us because there are different ways we use this verb. Y Paula, uh, Paula va a, va a contarles. Paula is going to tell you all about three different ways we use that verb dejar. Dejar is used uh, uh, very, very commonly in the three uh context she's going to tell you about so besides your pan <laughs> uh, uh, pan de molde besides your loaf of bread video uh, you're going to have your dejar video and this is this is you know, just straight grammar but she shows you a lot of very good examples and after those examples you're going to get a series of things to ooh, how are you going to use going to use dejar to say uh, a bunch of different ideas so I'm going to give you another slide set that will talk about uh, some ways you might use dejar in a conversation. And so again, you'll be kind of thinking, hmm, how would I use dejar to say? And these are gonna be things that people often say in a conversational way, and they're all gonna use dejar, and it'll walk you through the little steps of that. Todo bien? Sí. So, sí. bien. Magnifico. Um, for the week after this, I have found some really interesting articles about weather-related things. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Re, uh, ideas relacionadas con problemas del clima. Y son interesantes. Wow, they are super interesting. But I, I hesitate to give that to you on top of two other videos because the listening <laughs> is probably more important right now. Yeah. So we'll do a little bit of the articles next week, the week it's coming up. Uh, Todo bien. Sí. Dejar y uh, solamente un video de uh, audio comprensión de, del pan rebanado. Sliced bread. <laughs> y cómo es es ¿Por qué es tan terrible? ¿Por qué, ¿Por qué no es no es la mejor manera de producir y consumir el pan? Y así es. ¿Ok? ¿Vale? Bueno. Uh, so, yeah, and don't forget about registration for any of your classes or if you still have kitties, grandkids taking swim.